apparently coronavirus is lurking at skate parks. They're made of concrete, they're outside, and teenagers are normally the ones who use them. But this local council in Melbourne decided, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put concrete blocks in the middle of the skate park because those pesky kids, if their version of exercise is to roll around on a skateboard, banned. Concrete bollards, bang, right in the middle. Now, without doubt, one of the toughest things to talk about without getting yourself into a world of trouble because the ideological and political landmines that are here is to talk about anything to do with Black Lives Matter and the Australian interpretation of that, which, of course, is about Indigenous deaths in custody. Chief amongst those who are absolutely committed to the number like 437 people since the 1990s have died in custody, trying to basically put it in your mind that what happened to that bloke in the United States all those weeks ago, killed by the cops? Well, there's about 437 examples of something kind of like that that have happened in Australia is, of course, the Turnbull Times, the Guardian. We call them that because, of course, he's the one who brought it here. This is one of their stories today. Third Aboriginal death in custody in two months as a man dies in a prison. So you think, hang on, what sort of a shit show are they running there? What's going on? What sort of attacks are taking place? Well, tragically for this man's family he decided to take his own life. As best as we understand, no interaction with the guards. I have no doubt that the mental health impacts of being in jail is not pleasant for anyone, regardless of their cultural backgrounds, regardless of whether they are Indigenous or non-Indigenous to the country. But this is how they wrote up the story. Because that headline, where most people on Twitter only read the headline and the Twitter then feeds the protest and the protest then feeds the politicians and the politicians then... You know the cycle here. Western Australia has recorded its third Aboriginal death in custody in less than two months after a prisoner in the state's north took his own life. They then go on to have a look at some things for the, uh, since 2017, where 13 Aboriginal prisoners and 29 non-Aboriginal prisoners, they're using those words, by the way, not us, have died in custody since 2017, according to figures provided by the Justice Department. So again, are these acts of brutality? What's going on? Well, this is in their own words. Now think about the headline, think about the political climate of which these headlines are thrown into. The Indigenous deaths include three suicides, one murder by another prisoner, and one case where authorities were unable to determine whether the cause was natural. The remainder, otherwise the majority, eight were from natural causes. Where is that in the conversation? There is a whole group of people who are only informed by the headlines of which they read, the headlines that they conflate with the headline they saw from the United States, and all of it just fits into a wider narrative. But there are people who are trying to pull apart the entire society based off, in part, the headlines that they read in things like the Turnbull Times. Now, is there a history of terrible things being done to all different types of people, you bet. I'm not one of those people who's going to try and pretend nothing to see here. But there's also not everything to see here. Unless you're willing to actually read everything in the article. Where the article doesn't quite match the headline, that doesn't quite match the narrative that's trying to keep people angry to get back out on the streets.